Very little new information has come to light since the story of the tragedy was first published. Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370 vanished from radar off the south coast of Vietnam in the South China Sea. 239 people were on board, and at this point, it is presumed that they have all perished in some kind of disaster. A massive search and rescue effort involving 40 ships and 34 aircraft from nine different nations has yet to discover any sign of the missing aircraft. This will be hard for you to believe, but even when you have Wi-Fi on the plane, commercial pilots in most cases do not have internet in their cockpit, nor do they have satellite phones, nor GPS trackers. All they have to connect with the ground is old-style radios. And radios that sound awful. Radios are not safe, anyone for any reason can interfere with them. Indeed any person can buy an aviation radio without any kind of permit and start pretending he or she is a controller and aircraft have no way of verifying that they are indeed talking to a real controller. Plus there is the confusion factor. When you train as a pilot, a lot of what you have to learn is how to understand controllers over a radio, a radio which has poor sound quality and leads to frequent mix-ups because of the different accents and languages that are spoken around the world by controllers and pilots. Theoretically, every controller should speak English. But practically Spanish traffic controllers speak in Spanish to aircraft that have Spanish identifiers, or address them in Spanish, sometimes depriving other aircraft flown by non-Spanish speaking pilots of information that could be useful to them. Moreover, radio frequencies forces pilots to listen to everything that is said to other aircraft, until you are called something that you find extremely distracting when piloting. Imagine if you had a telephone system in which you had to listen to everyone else's conversations until somebody finally spoke to you. Well that is what is happening in the air right now, all over the world. Primitive indeed. It is indefensible that we send planes loaded with passengers over the oceans without internet, real-time voice communications nor GPS trackers. And even over land and near the coasts we use radars to know where aircraft are, but radars don't know really exactly where a plane is because radars are so slow at locating fast-moving objects that by the time a controller sees you, you are somewhere else. And radars have very short range so we can't have radar coverage over oceans. The radar transponder system is just obsolete. But still the norm. That Malaysian MH370 can disappear over the ocean, and nobody knows exactly where, or the Air France 447 flight over the Atlantic went down, and it took months to find the black box, is just irresponsible on the part of aviation authorities. In some cases, a passenger with Wi-Fi on a commercial plane can have more vital information than the pilot in the cockpit. For example, weather information. A pilot has a weather radar, but the passenger can have real-time weather information along the route, and that is as useful and sometimes more useful. But pilots in many jurisdictions are not allowed to use iPads with real-time weather information. Private aviation has incorporated iPads and real-time weather info much faster than commercial aviation. A commercial plane radar sees the next dangerous clouds, CBs clouds that can bring an airliner down, and that is all they show. But the passenger with internet can have information about dangerous weather activity all the way to the destination. The passenger sees beyond what the pilot sees. Why can't airlines have those tools if private jets already do? 